Now you guys know the rules here. The robots do the painting. You guys do the guessing. This first category is infamous criminals. This individual was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1899 to Italian immigrant parents. He rose to prominence during the Prohibition era, leading a criminal empire in Chicago. Hey! He was known for his ruthless tactics. He was involved in infamous, the infamous St. Valentine's Day Massacre. There you go, Aaron. Hey, Aaron's on a fast internet connection tonight. <laughs> Despite his criminal activities, he was ultimately convicted for tax evasion. His nickname was Scarface, a moniker derived from a facial scar he received in a bar fight. Didn't know that part. You got it. You, got, you guys got it. Al Capone was one of the most notorious gangsters in American history who controlled the Chicago outfit during the Prohibition era. His criminal activities included bootlegging, bribery, and violence, making him a symbol of lawlessness. Lawlessness. Oh, Alright, you guys got the first one. Next one might be a little harder. There we go. This individual was a neuroscience graduate student before committing his crimes. He meticulously planned an attack on a public venue, buying weapons and ammunition over several months. The incident took place in Aurora, Colorado in 2012. dyed his hair bright orange and referred to himself as the Joker. <laughs> he was responsible for the mass shooting during a midnight screen of The Dark Knight Rises, the Batman movie. Anybody remember his name? <laughs> or is he already, he's already gone away in everybody's mind. That's probably good. <laughs> Anybody remember this famous criminal's name? Infamous criminal's name. No? There you go. That's correct. James Holmes committed the Aurora movie theater shooting in 2012, killing 12 people and injuring 70 others. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. James Holmes. Now we'll go a little darker. <laughs> This individual had a troubled childhood and was heavily influenced by his cousin, a Vietnam War veteran. He was a notorious serial killer, rapist, and burglar active primarily in California. And I can actually remember having to double lock the windows and stuff from this guy. <laughs> Known for his brutal and satanic rituals, he left pentagrams at many of his crime scenes. His spree of crimes earned him a fearsome nickname related to a time of the day. He was called the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker and was apprehended in 1985 after being recognized by civilians. Pretty X a good guess, but incorrect. This was the Night Stalker, but do you remember his name? Who's got his name? Anybody? And I do remember having to be careful. Yeah, Aaron's got it. Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker, terrorized Southern California in the mid-1980s. He was convicted of 13 murders and numerous other crimes, dying in prison in 2013. Okay, who's this guy? Another infamous guy. This individual studied psychology and was known for his charm and intelligence. He escaped from custody twice before his final capture. His crimes span multiple states in the United States during the 1970s. Who knows this guy? 
He often used a fake injury or impersonated authority figures to lure his victim. He was a notorious serial killer who was eventually executed in Florida in 1989. And his name is synonymous with handsome killer. <laughs> Didn't know that. Who knows? Who's got this one? Infamous killer executed in Florida in 1989. The handsome killer. Who knows? Oh, there you go. There knows all these criminals. Ted Bundy was an American serial killer who confessed to 30 homicides across the United States. Next up. This individual was described as a loner with a fascination for mass shootings. He lived in Newton, no, I'm sorry, Newtown, Connecticut, with his mother. He committed a horrendous act of violence in 2012. His crime led to nationwide debates on gun control and mental health. Look at those eyes. <laughs> right? Who, know, who remembers this guy's name? His crime led to... Uh, okay, I already said that. He was responsible for the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, killing 26 people, including 20 children. Correct. I see the correct answer on the board. Look at those eyes, huh? What do you got? <laughs> I think he might have had some mental issues. Adam Lanza carried out the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. He killed his mother before attacking the school and then took his own life. These are getting dark, aren't they? <laughs> Let's lighten it up. This individual committed his crime in 1971 and remains unidentified to this day. He hijacked a commercial airliner and demanded $200,000 in ransom. After receiving the ransom, he parachuted from the plane and vanished. You guys remember the, this guy's name? His daring escape took place over the Pacific Northwest. D.B. Cooper is what he was known to to the media. The case remains unsolved. D.B. Cooper is the alias of an unidentified man who hijacked the Northwest Orient Airlines airplane in 1971. Despite extensive searches and investigations, his fate and remains are unknown. I guess his fate remains unknown. But... <laughs> D.B. Cooper. Although, did you guys just, I think in the news somewhere, they, they said they might have figured out who it was and he died or something. I'm not sure. All right, let's move on to number seven. This individual exhibited disturbing behaviors from a young age, including an interest in dead animals. He committed his first murder shortly after graduating from high school. His crimes involved necrophilia, cannibalism, and preserving body parts. Lovely. He was acting. He was active primarily in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area during the 1980s and early 90s. Who remembers? He was known as the Milwaukee Cannibal. He was arrested in 1991 after a would-be victim escaped. My goodness, lucky guy. There you go. Everybody's got this one. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer and sex offender who murdered 17 young men and boys. 
He was killed by a fellow inmate in 1994. Guess they didn't like him in prison. They, they didn't want to get eaten in prison. All right, let's go on to number eight. This individual was a decorated Gulf War veteran before turning to terrorism. He held strong anti-government views and was influenced by the Waco siege and Ruby Ridge incidents. His act of terrorism occurred on April 19, 1995. He used a truck bomb to carry out his attack. Who knows? Who knows who this one is? He was responsible for the Oklahoma City bombing, which killed 168 people and injured over 600 people. You remember his name? Timothy McVeigh was executed in 2001 for his role in the Oklahoma City bombing, the deadliest act of domestic terrorism in U.S. history until September 11th, 2001. Timothy McVeigh. Number nine. This individual was a mathematics prodigy who graduated from Harvard at the age of 20. He became a recluse living in a remote cabin in Montana. He conducted a nationwide bombing campaign against modern technology and industrial society. His manifesto, Industrial Society and Its Future, was published in major newspapers. Who remembers either his name or his title? <laughs> what, what they called him. All these serial killers had names. He was known as the Unabomber. Unabomber, he was captured in 1996 after his brother recognized his writing style. Anybody remember his name? Ted Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole for his 17 year mail bombing campaign that killed three people and injured 23 others. Ted Kaczynski lived in a cabin in Montana. Graduated from Harvard at age 20. Smart man. A little obsessed. All right, last one, last criminal. This individual was a celebrated NFL running back and Heisman Trophy winner. I think you'll know this one. He transitioned to a successful acting career, starring in films the Naked Gun series. In 1994, he was involved in a highly publicized car chase in a white Ford Bronco. Who remembers? Oh, there it is. I see the answer on the board. Pizzas. <laughs> you got it. His trial was dubbed the trial of the century. He was acquitted of the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. Another little known fact, I went to high school in the same class as Nicole Brown Simpson at Dana Hills High School in Dana Point, California. <laughs> O.J. Simpson was acquitted in 1995 of the murders, and but later he was found liable for their deaths in civil trial, and his case remains one of the most famous and controversial in U.S. legal history. All right, well, you guys did pretty good on that first lightning round, right? <laughs>